آمنت أن الآخرة لا بد يوما آتية بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Wow, there's some dusty brothers that are still sleeping, mashallah. Assalamu alaikum. Much better. Um, I want to start off by saying all oh, praise be to Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, the most powerful. It's only Him we worship and only Him we bow down to and only Him we turn to when we're in need. And also like to send peace and blessings upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Before I go on, shout out to the masjid for allowing me to come here. Jazakallah khairan for organizing this. At the end of the day, I'm not here to guide no one. Guidance only comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. I'm only a stepping stone for you guys to learn from a dusty sinner. A man that lived it. A man that, wallahi, regrets it till the, till the day he dies, inshallah. And regret is a good thing. But sometimes do not put yourself in a situation where you have to regret it in the future. One of them being is what? Being disobedient to your parents after they've gone. This is something that happens amongst our communities every single day where people are being dishonest, where people are being disobedient to their parents. And wallahi, Allah tests those that he loves. And also, I want to shout out to the masjid for giving me a glass bowl. They know if an enemy were to pull up, I'll go free in front of you, mashallah. <laughs> I left what I needed in the car. No, but I'm playing with you. But alhamdulillah, look. When I say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test you brothers, yeah? He will test you with your knowledge, He will test you with your family, He will test you with your job and everything that comes with it. He will test you with the friends that you have. And I remember two weeks ago, I went to MK, I went to Milton Keys. There was a brother that came up to me, he put me up in the office, we're talking for a good five, ten minutes after talking to him. And the brother says to me, I'm away from this lifestyle, man. Today is the day of change. Today is the day that I'm not going to go back to doing my stupidness. I'm not going to be selling the drugs. I'm not going to be getting revenge from my enemies. And wallahi, Allah tested him and he wasn't even 24 hours. Within 15 hours later, after I left Milton Keys, I get a message on Instagram. Salamu alaikum wa alaikum as -salam. What's the situation, Akhi? Brother, the same person that put the picture of you and him on Twitter has just been stabbed up. How is this possible, bro? I left him not even 15 hours ago. How is a man already being stabbed up? By who? Other Muslims. His own community, his own race. And I'm not going to be here to, to, Masha, to, Allah, to, to mention the nationality of the brother because we've got sensitive people. I wish I bought my paracetamol because it seems that like everybody gets hurt with feelings when nationality gets involved. I couldn't give a damn about your nationality. What I give a damn about is what? You believe in La ilaha illallah. Muhammad Rasulullah, that is enough for you to put every difference aside. Look around you, bro. Every man is a different shade from different nationality. Some of us are reverts. Some of us are Muslims, born Muslims. And you know what happens? Sometimes the people that become a Muslim further down the line. Akhi, wallah, I know a brother that became a Muslim, what, two, three months. And I found out about him in Ireland when I went recently this weekend. This guy, before he became a Muslim, he decided to memorize Surah Al-Fatiha. Before Islam. Before Islam. It reminds you of what? The man that killed the 99 men. How? This man wanted to change, Akhi. This man had something empty within his heart. So he decided after killing 99 people, he decided to go down the avenue of seeking a purpose, seeking forgiveness, being full because there's an empty part in his heart, bro. There's an empty part in his soul. He's trying to fulfill that. Then he goes and he comes across a layman. Who's a layman, bro? A layman is about me and you. A man comes up to goes, I've committed every sin under the sun. I'm paraphrasing now, yeah? Putting the difference aside from the man that killed 99 men. If someone comes to you right now, I've committed zina. Akhi, I've got two girls pregnant. Akhi, I've done a smoke, a sniff, I inject crack, whatever it may be. We're quick to say to him, brother, this guy, will, Allah will never forgive you, bro. You're too, far, you're too far down the hole, Akhi. There's no hope for you. This is what this man did, the one that killed 99 men. He decided to go and ask someone away from his 
uh, environment. This man, this, obviously not away from the sea, but just someone within the sea, but away from his area. This man said to him, Allah will never forgive you. Look at the nastiness you've done. Look at the amount of men you've killed. The amount of families you've now are hurting forever. So the man killed him as well, made it a hundred. But he still felt empty within his heart. So the man continued. He came across someone of no, no, he came across someone that said to him, I've killed this amount of people. What do I do? I want to seek forgiveness. I want to have a purpose in life. The man, the second man he went to, goes, I don't know you about your situation, but you should go out of your area. There's a scholar, there's someone of knowledge that you could go to, that you can seek help from. So the man decided to spare his life because he directed him in the, uh, uh, in the right guidance. Subhanallah, as he was on his way to go to the person of knowledge, angel of death came to him. Angel of death came to him and he died on the spot. So now you got the angels from Jannah, Joy, and you got the angels of Jahannam, yeah, have come to him and they said to him, no, we're going to drag him to Jannah. Muhammad, no, no, we're going to drag him to Jahannam. This guy has killed a hundred people. There's no, he hasn't, he hasn't even seen, seek forgiveness yet. Then guess what happens? Then they come to a dispute that says, you know what? If he's closer to the person of knowledge that he goes to, then he is the people of Jannah. We, we, we forgive him and he goes into Jannah. But if he is closer to the land where he did the thulum, the nastiness, guess what happens? We will take him to Jahannam. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did what? Shrinked the lands for him. In order for him to do what? Be closer to the land where he wanted to go and seek a purpose. That's your Rabb. That's your Lord. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look how merciful he is. So this is what happened to this man that I spoke to and I sat down with. Akhi, the man said, I want to change. Bear in mind, he's got pagans left, right and center. My man's drug dealing. My man's ruining families. My man's ruining uh, uh, aunties. And you, you, bro, you name it. My man's selling crack, bro. Crack. My man ain't even selling what? Sniff. White, as whatever people call it nowadays. White, Charlie, sugar. I, I don't even know what you call it nowadays, bro. Dusty guys in the bundle. Living this lifestyle where you're chasing people that Wallahi will never bring you happiness. You ask them, Akhi, there will always be a man better than them. You ask the man that's in the band, how much you getting, bro? A man that will brag about it. Man's getting like six, seven bills a day, I'm um, sorry, a week. Where's the rest of the money, bro? You're making about a few bags a day. Uh, that goes to the man that's, a, uh, you know, that I work for. It just goes to show you, bro, bro, you're nobody. And this reminds me of the same time when I came out of prison, I met a guy. He's doing life in jail now, bro. And I kept on asking him, bro, fix up. My guy, fix up, Akhi, for the sake of Allah, because you're going to go down this avenue, but wallahi, there's going to be no turning back. Now my man wants to be in jail, doing life in jail, 34 years. Now he wants to be jumping on a bandwagon of like, you know what? I want to seek forgiveness from Allah. But I told you this many years ago, bro. My man FaceTiming me, Akhi, FaceTiming me, because an addict overdosed on his crack. Injected it in front of him. My man's getting excited. Yo, Aki, look, bro. My man's overdosing on my food, bro. 10-10. My food is that good. I said to him, Akhi, fear Allah, man. Go and call an ambulance or something because, wallah, if this person dies, he's going to die upon your hands. You fed him those drugs, bro. You allowed him to consume that. You allowed him to sniff it or inject it, wherever it may be. You're going to have the same sin for it, bro. If my man dies, but what's on your head? My man decided to say, you know what, you're right. Came on FaceTime, called the ambulance. Ambulance came, jumped out of the window. My man's gone. And then guess what happens, bro? He continued jumping down this bandwagon lifestyle, being in a bando, being in the country, making money. Good money as well, bro. One or two bags a day. My man's living it. He works for himself. And then he came across some pagans that are trying to take over his country line. They're trying to take over his line. A line that he's been built up for years and years. Decided to get into a knife fight. And the man that they killed was an actual footballer. He was a footballer. The man had his own 
football team. The man was semi-pro. My man was going to make it professional. I don't know what made him jump on this bandwagon team. It must have been the thrill. It must have been the likes and the fame. I don't know where it is, bro. You come from a good home. You're going down this path of being a drug dealer for what? Silver spoon, bro. Nah. The man, man decided to jump on the bandwagon by guys around him. And guess what happens, bro? He came across my boy. Him and my boy ended up having a fight. My brother, he's Muslim as well. My brother ended up stabbing him to death. I left him in the country in the addict's house, bleeding out. And guess what happens, bro? Him and another boy he was with, they got arrested sometime after that. Wallahi, my boy, I'm not, I'm not ashamed to say it. But my man claimed to be a bad boy, bro. He claimed to be a gangster. Yeah? When it came to serving life in jail, my guy, that I thought was my boy, that's why I don't die, he's not going to break the code of the roads, decided to snitch. My man's pointing fingers at his boy that was with him. I don't chat to him no more, but I don't chat to snitches. Same way I don't chat to a man that comes in front of me and goes, bro, I don't pray. I don't respect you, bro. But yet you jump up and down for your boss or whoever it may be at work or even in school or college. You will listen to your teachers and that, but you don't listen to Allah, but you're telling me you delay Salah. How can you can't be around me, bro? Man's not cutting my ties with you. You're still a Muslim if you are still praying. And as the hadith mentions, the difference between us and the kuffars is what? Salah. That's where it starts, bro. You don't pray, don't come around me, bro. You're, you are exactly like them. The man that, that prosecuted the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you think you could be rolling around me. Muslim by name. Not a Muslim by actions. Now, I can't be around you, bro. My man decided to snitch in court. And guess what happened? The judge gave him 34 years and the man he was with 32 years, bro. My man's coming out in his 50s or 60s, bro. His mother messages me. Or stuff like, not even me. His mother messages his family, uh, some of the man that's around me. Or she calls him. And we saw her one time at the burial, yeah? I didn't go, but my brothers went, yeah? And some of the man, they went to a burial because someone got killed in South East London, in Woolwich sites. They saw the mother, the mother's begging the man them. Begging the man them. Well, talk to my son, man. He's got nobody in jail. You don't have experience, man. You don't have memories together. Talk to my son. No one's talking to him. No one's writing him letters. No one's even giving him a phone call even though he's got a tech. No one is even, no one is even answering to him when he comes to Instagram and Twitter and whatnot, bro. Talk to my son. He's miserable. Man, them are like, yeah, yes, no worries, auntie, no worries. Nah, brother. Your boy claimed to be a bad boy. Your boy claimed to be a part of this road and the code. And the code is no matter what you do, bro, you claim to be a bad boy, Allah will put you in a situation. Akhi, you claim to be a man, a man, bro. Now do life in jail, bro, because you destroyed other people's lives. What's going to happen to you, my guy? And you brother's here. Allahumma barik. Brothers here today. MashaAllah, tabarakallah, wearing a, a necklace. What's next, bro? I see a man with an earring here. Yeah, you better take off that earring, bro. You're imitating the woman. But what's next? You're going to get your nose pierced like a buffalo. It don't make sense. Dusty guys, bro. But this is the reality. And you know what? I come from a generation, my boy. Yeah? I come from a generation where we used to wear... Saggy clothes, bro. Saggy clothes. No tight clothing, bro. Nowadays, you got brothers that are wearing tight stuff. Night, tea neck, whatever it's called, bro. Where was it called again? High neck, tea neck, whatever it's called, bro. What? Whatever, he, whatever that is, bro. What's going on, brothers? Man, I'm out here wearing tight clothes. And alhamdulillah, these are the same brothers that are busting low. These are the same brothers that, wallahi, if a real bad boy walks past them, the same way the devil avoided Umar al Khattab by crossing the road and avoiding his road, these men will pull up their trousers quickly. Am I lying? You men are laughing because you know there's a man around you that's doing that. Ah, you know who you are. Let's be real, bro. 
Every single two I go to, there's an issue, bro. Every single two. Brother, I'm coming here. Wallahi. I'm not going to expose the brother's phone call. I don't even know how he got my number. Brother's calling me, Akhi, listen. I'm in Northwest London. There's, a bit, a bit, there's been an issue outside my house. I decided to bottle one guy. I said to him, excuse me, bro. You bottled a guy outside your house. So you ran away from your comfort to call me to how I advise you to come back to your comfort. What a donut. Man, start me for your own doorstep, bro. Akhi, who's the new one? Nah, Akhi, you know what? He thought he was a bad boy, so I decided to pull him up on. Who the hell are you, bro? Who gave you the authority to question another man and how he rose? And bear in mind, brothers, no disrespect to the gangsters, yeah? The gangsters, no disrespect. Your end will never be happy, bro. You will live a miserable life. Your end will be humiliating. The same way a man claimed to be a prophet after the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Yeah? Guess what happens? Allah humiliated him and he died on the toilet. He died on the toilet, bro. Look how you died. He claimed to be a man that you were sent. To be a man that was after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Man that will be going down this path, Allah, I understand, bro. We've become an ummah of attention seekers, bro. Don't lie to yourselves. Everyone's doing it, bro. Everybody's jumping on this clout chasing, bro. I don't understand why. From the sisters to the brothers. Sisters, mashallah, tabarakallah. Should I start? I couldn't give a damn about your feelings, bro. Let me start. Yeah? The sisters, mashallah, akhi. Convertible hijabs. Up here. I don't know what's going on. And they have the audacity to go online. Actually, they have the audacity to go online. They got this ring, this ring camera thing where it's got lights here, yeah? and you can see it. And they're doing makeup tutorials. Actually. Your whole body is sponsored by Boost or Super Drug. How does that make sense? And you have the audacity to tell me that you want a real man when everything about you is fake. No disrespect to the sisters here, yeah? Some sisters are going to take some per, a, a piece of uh, curtain to wear the niqab out here, bro. No, no, keep, keep the curtains. It's a reality, it's a reality. But it's the reality, man. You need to beautify yourself. Wallahi, if you're doing this, sisters, and I love you for the sake of Allah, I'm not here to get on to you. But as Umar ibn Khattab said, we can judge by what is apparent. We know, Akhi, we got sisters, bro. I got, I, bro, I got three sisters. I know how it feels, bro. Sometimes you got to stick it on your sisters. How dare you walk out of the house like that? How dare you, bro? Become a man, bro. But not a man by getting onto them and dragging them up and what? Strangling them. No, bro. Be a man and lead by example. How are you towards your sisters, bro? I know brothers that used to get their sisters to sneak girls into their house behind their mothers and their fathers back. And they have the audacity to turn around and say, you know what, bro? If my sister's speaking to a man, I'm ready to ride out. I'm ready to put a knife in him. You dusty little guy. Since when was you a bad boy? You could just about use a butter knife, Akhi. Real talk. But brothers want to go down this path for what? And defend and ride out for their sister. Akhi, I blame you, brothers. You never led by example, bro. You never gave a damn about your sister. Now you're there sleeping around with sisters and ruining other sisters' lives, other sisters' daughters. For what? I understand, my bro. But sometimes, Akhi, sometimes you have to look at yourself to be the problem. You can't blame the sisters for wearing these makeup and this and that. Because you're not leading by example. We are men. Man, them claim for sisters to wear the hijab properly and the dusty guys wearing the tight clothes, bro. My man, when he was fat, I'll say how he is. When my man was fat, he's wearing bare baggy clothes, bro. Extra, extra large. Now my man started to hit the gym. My man's gonna smooth. So as long as you're smooth, bro. Now my man's trying to show the bicep, you dusty little guy, bro. You could just about to lift your blanket up to go and pray Fajr, but my man's going in the gym. And guess what? Allahu Akbar, Tabarak al Rahman. My man's putting a. Who does this, bro? My man takes a tripod to the gym, holds it up, records himself doing workouts. And on top of that, puts a nasheed in the background. <laughs> like you know anything about the nasheed, bro. Um, and then the, shut up, man. <laughs> huh? We 
Here's an example. Akhi, I'm still covering my aura. Akhi, really? You're covering your aura? Mama's eye, hey, boom. Mama's eye, you can see every definition in his body. I said him he's covering his aura, bro. MashaAllah, Tabarakha, Akhi. What's next, Akhi? You're going to wear a bra to lift up your chest. Let's be real, bro. That's the situation of the Ummah. And uh, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said there will come a time where the man will be dressed like the woman. And the woman will be dressed like the man. No one is safe in this dunya, man. When death comes for you, my bro, Wallah al azim is not going to seek your permission. It's not going to look at your status. It's not going to look at your money. When death comes for you, he's going to complete his job. And his job was to do what? It's come to take your soul. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered him to come and take your soul. There's nothing you could do that can stop it. There was a story back in the days, my parents used to tell me, yeah? There was a man that was so wealthy that he had decided to have a safe underneath ground. A safe underground. Yeah? The guy had gold, money, you mentioned it, bro, the guy had everything. He had the safe where if it closes, it can only be opened on the outside. The man decided to go to his safe and decided to look at his wealth. Arrogance, pride, I'm better than them. And guess what happens? The safe closed behind him. Everybody, his family members, people around him, people that used to work for him, they all asked that, where's my man? My man's disappeared. Only to, a, I think a few weeks, months or years, I don't know, yeah? Later they found him dead in his wealth. That just goes to show my brothers, yeah? And I'm gonna ask you this right now, my brothers, yeah? If you know a place right now, if you know a place right now that you know that you could go to and you could commit every sin under that, under the sun, and you could avoid death coming for you, billionaires will give up their eyes just for you to go there. There's nowhere on this earth that you can go that you could avoid Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the soldier that Allah sends, the death, death will come for you, bro. And this is what I said to you, Akhir. this brother, Alhamdulillah, after getting stabbed up a few times, he decided to speak to me. When I spoke to him, I said to him, Akhir, what, you're going to ride out? You know who he is? He said, I know who he is. So what, you're going to ride out, bro, yeah? You're going to get the mash and go do your tin. He said to me, Akhir, I made the oath with you that day in the office, which was the day before, that I'm not going to do this anymore, man. And this is one of the signs that you were sincere because when you said, I've given up on all of this, bro, you're giving up on the dusty vaping, smoking weed, chatting to girls, stop burning weed, uh, uh, stop uh, selling weed, you gave up on committing zina, you gave up on doing what? Being disobedient to your parents. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested you in the same 24 hours. What are you going to do now, bro? He said to me, Akhi, I'm going to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm not going to do this no more. Why are my brothers, man? This is what's happening, Ak. And let me tell you the reality of being around the wrong people. Two weeks ago, one of the guys that I went to school with, his name is Alex. May Allah have mercy on him. Allahumma ameen. Yeah? Say ameen, brothers. MashaAllah. Hesitant, yeah? So imagine, my man's from a certain area in Lucian Borough. But we've got problems with certain other areas within Lucian Borough because Lucian Borough is a huge area, uh, it's a huge borough. He decided to be in a car with someone that's got beef, on top beef, pagans, whatever it may be. It was a hot, sunny day, actually, like today. He's winding down his window, my man's winding down his window, the guy next to him, I don't know if he's rolling up a zoo, rolling up something to smoke, I don't know, innit? Yeah? I'm at work, I get a phone call. Yo, Ak, well, go on, bro. He said to me, bro. My man just got killed. He said, what are you talking about? Alex, the one that we went to school with. This guy I used to roll with. So what do you mean he just got killed, bro? He's like, bro, he's sitting in his car. And let me tell you the story of what happened. Because I spoke to the man them after that. The man them said, bro, he was a driver. He was sitting in the car, rolling up a zoo. The man them was rolling up a zoo. One of the pagans saw him on a push bike. Yeah? Saw the guy that's in the passenger seat he's got problems with. Decided to make a U-turn, took out the knife. While my man's uh, busy on his phone, 
He put the knife through the window because the windows wound down and stabbed him once in the chest. Killed him on the spot, bro. This is the reality of a good or bad company. He died for no reason. Man was not even involved in the beef, bro. But the guy that was with him was involved in the beef. You could, bro, you could even research about it. It's about two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, Akhi. And then the man that's around him, bro, do you know what we need to do? We need to ride out. We need to go put someone down. Who are you going to go put down, bro? Four men have been arrested for his death. No one's been found guilty yet. You see, there's repercussions in everything that you do, bros. Your companions that's around you, with all due respect, I'm seeing some brothers as well, they have no etiquette of a Muslim whatsoever. There's no respect. Today, outside Lucia Masjid, a woman walks past with a dirty attitude. Get out of the way. Excuse me. She has every right to tell us to get out of the way, but not with the attitude, because we're taking up the path outside the Masjid. As a Muslim, we should make our way. The roads have rights, and we need to obey those rights. You feel me? So we... <coughs> I'm not going to lie to you I was a bit upset I haven't had a good day I said to him Shut up man What are you talking about man Fix up your attitude That was very wrong with me As a Muslim bro It's not from a Muslim Or his character To be like this Alhamdulillah I asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Forgive me But when she started Giving lip service back I said brother Let me not open my mouth brother With your bird mess on your head Listen Let me open my mouth brother you understand? Anyways, turns out to be, Akhi, I'm in the wrong. The brother with me said to me, Akhi, Amen, you're in the wrong, bro. Like, ask Allah for forgiveness. But sometimes, look, we're so quick to, and so eager to let our emotions out when in reality we don't know it has an impact on us as Muslims, bro. Back in my day, when we used to burn weed or used to smoke, bro, Wallahi, when we used to see an auntie or uncle, Akhi, we used to hide it from them. Nowadays, the aunties and the uncles are getting the smoke blown in their face. And this is happening, bro. This is the reality of it. And I'm speaking to guys every single day. Well, so what's today? Today's Friday. Thursday, yesterday, I met a brother in Stratford. I met an Albanian brother in Stratford. He says to me, Akhi, wallahi, the prison I was in, because he just got released a few weeks ago, yeah? He said, the prison I was in, there is no deen, a majority of them are Muslims in jail. Why have the Muslims come like this, man? The hadith mentions that this world is a prison to the believers and a paradise to the non-believers, bro. Why are we making sijin, the jail house, as our home, as our comfort? A man's done this, bro. Akhi, we done this. Wallahi, I know man. Akhi, uqsumu billah. Allah be my witness. They can't go from here, maybe to the top of the road, or even to the entrance of this masjid without carrying their pistol on their wrist, uh, on, their, on their waist. For what, bro? I'm scared for my enemies to come to me. Not scared of them like that, but I don't want to die, bro. My man caused so much beef on the roads that he's not even comfortable. Man could have family. It's going to bite him, either his mom or dad or siblings. The world's gonna come back to bite you, bro. What next? Man them in New Cross a few years ago. <coughs> He's still in jail for this. He got the load that he got a phone call saying, Man them, the bakers are on the high street outside a club. What does he do, bro? Muslim, Akhi, Muslim. Decides to what? Load up the tin, goes by, gets in his car, man them are driving by, Akhi lets it rip. Who dies in the process, bro? An innocent woman, Akhi. The man that they were after didn't even die, Akhi. This was a few years ago, a new cross high street, outside of a club. It just goes to show, my guy, that sometimes even the innocent people, even, majority of the time, even the innocent people would decide, so not decide, will go through the calamities and the trials and the tribulation because of something that you done, Akhi. This finger, it's our shahada finger, Akhi. This is our tawheed. This is what we believe in. Brothers come to me, Akhi, there's guns inside Islam, which doesn't make sense to me. Brother comes to me, Akhi, what set you from, bro? 
Ach, I'm a Muslim, bro. No, man, why are you Sufi, you Sunni, you Salafi, you feed this? Ach, what set was your granddad from, bro? What set was your mother from, bro? Now you learn one or two books of Islamic etiquettes and manners and character and knowledge. Now you decided to become a scholar on everyone else. So now you have the audacity to say, you know what? Don't listen to this imam. Don't listen to that imam. That imam is upon bid'ah. That imam is upon kufr. Akhi, who made you Hercules, bro? Who made you Superman to go and point fingers at someone? Even Superman has a weakness, which is his kryptonite. And your weakness, akhi, is what? The Prophet Muhammad said, even if you have an atom of pride, akhi, pride, you would not enter Jannah. How many pride do we have, bro? Look around you. Look at yourselves, man. Look in the mirror. See the difference that you're making in society. Wallah al I see people. I said to them, bro, a mother, a mo Wallah, today from Birmingham, one brother called me and said to me, bro, I don't, akhi, I don't know why this is, you know. Every single time, akhi, uksumu billah, I decide to go to a talk, I'm getting random phone calls. I say to the brother, akhi, where you got my number from? Akhi, it's a secret, it's an amana. It's my number, bro. He means a secret. Dusty guy. Anyway, yeah? The brother's not giving it up. I said to him, what's the issue? Today he goes to me, bro, the situation of a 14-year-old kid. All the men around him have got no face, Canada Goose, Louis Vuitton, Gucci, uh, uh, Gucci sliders and Gucci um, pouches. So now the guy is seeing this around his boy and brings it back to who? His mother. His mother works part-time like a single mother. Mom, I need you to get me this. His mother says, no, I can't afford it. I can just about break even. He decides to get angry about his mother and call her every name under the sun. For what? Because you want to fear with your people, bro. Because you want to be a part of people that what? That's going to ride or die for you. The person that will ride or die for you, bro, is your parents, my guy. Well, why is your parents? I've been there. Actually, I remember coming into the kitchen one time. I remember coming into the kitchen one time and I remember seeing my mother crying to Allah while washing up. And I'm sneaking up to her and I'm thinking, wow, why is my mom crying, Akhi? I sneak up to her and I open the door slightly and I'm seeing my mother. I'm like, inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. My mother is reciting these words, bro. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Qala inna ma ashku bathi wa huzni ila Allah. I only complain of my grief and my worries to Allah. And she follows on to say, Ya Allah, I've given up. Every single trials and tribulations that Allah threw at my mother, she accepted it. With patience, sabrun jameel. And she gave up, Akhi. She's done everything for us, Akhi. She gave birth to 14 kids, man. She had to bury seven of them. Seven kids she buried. Wallah al adim brothers, you may not know stories of your parents till today or even of the miscarriages that your mother might have gone through or even, the, or even of the sleepless nights that your mother has gone through to the level, Akhid, listen to this bro, to the level to the level where she didn't even go to sleep with her full stomach she made sure her kids were fed that's your mother's bro and what's your father doing bro? your father's in the shop your father's doing Ubering. Your father's grinding his ass off, as they say in the English, yeah? And what are you doing, bro? You're getting everything under the sun actually delivered to you, bro. And what's happening now is people are sending me WhatsApp uh, uh, videos and uh, tagging me on Instagram and of our Muslim brothers and sisters suffering. Actually, I have to tell them, with all due respect, yeah? I have to tell them to shut your mouth, bro. Why are you sending me pictures and videos of our Muslim Ummah suffering when I can't do nothing about it? Now, Akhi, you have an audience, you have a platform, share it, I'm going to share it. What's that going to do, bro? Allah will not change the condition of the people, bro, and to change the condition of yourself. So I have to look at myself. Am I a changed man? Hell no. Do I worship Allah the way he deserves to be worshipped? I don't. Do I fear Allah the way he deserves to be feared? Well, no, I don't. But I'm striving, bro. I'm striving. But guess what's going to make it easy for me? 
my good companions around me, bro. If a companion around me calls me right now, goes to me, I just got into a road rage. I just came across some pagans. Bro, let's ride out. What does it make? What does it... What do I have to do to show him that I'm not about that lifestyle no more? I have to inform him, bro. I leave it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The same way this brother got stabbed up within 15 hours after my talk, I told him, I leave it to Allah. Leave it to Allah. The same way, the same guy on two occasions, and I say this, yeah? On two occasions, the same man that nearly shot at me, the man that nearly took off my head, Akhi. Wallahi, I can hear the bullets. I can hear the bullets hitting stuff around me. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected me. Was the same guy that when it came to push, uh, push and shove, Akhi, he got deported to Jamaica. He was a menace, I'm not going to lie to you. My man was about that life. My man was a shooter in my ends. Guess what happened to him, bro? He went to Jamaica. He ended up having a shootout with the feds in Jamaica. Akhi, they shot him up and humiliated him. You know how they humiliated him? They called the pickup truck to reverse to his body. They picked up his dead body and dashed him in the back of the pickup truck. You see how Allah humiliates the ones that oppress people. This could be those that sell drugs, those that physically, mentally and verbally hurt others. Allah will humiliate you. Akhi, I got the video sent to me. It's on YouTube now. My man's there. Akhi, wallahi, his dead body gets picked up and dashed in the back of a pickup truck. And this is a man that thought he was above the law of Allah. This is a man that oppressed people. This is a man that shot up people and stabbed people and so on and so forth. And look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dealt with him if he doesn't repent. Sincerely repent. And I say this to you, my brothers, man. There will come a time when death is going to knock on your door. And when death knocks on the door, bro, it's not going to be coming for you. It's going to be coming for those that you love the most. And who do, we, who do we love other than the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the most? Our mothers. One guy I remember and I said to myself, Akhi, I can't even relate to you. I met in jail. Akhi, this guy was a bad boy on road, Akhi. He was a bad boy in jail as well. Akhi, a time came where he spent one week behind his cell. One week behind his cell. Not coming out for breakfast, not coming out for lunch or dinner, not coming out for association, not coming out for gym, not coming out to have a shower. And I think to myself, bro, let me go and chat to this brother. Every time I came, Aki, he avoided to chat to me. So I said to the governor, please, open the door, let me go talk to him. Every time the door opened, he kept on slamming the door back in my face. Then I eventually got through to him and I sat down with him. Asalaamu Alaikum, what's wrong, my bro? He says to me, Akhi, I've had the, the worst news that I could have ever had while being in jail. Bro, go on, Akhi, chat to me. I'm a man's here, but I'm here to support you regardless. He goes to me, Akhi, my mother has returned back to Allah. And the guy started crying like a baby, Akhi. I've never seen a big man like this cry like this. Never. And I'm trying to comfort him and I'm rubbing his back, Akhi, and I'm thinking, bro, it's okay, Akhi, she's in the hands of Allah. He goes to me, how can I be okay when my mother died as a kafir? I couldn't even make dua for her. I can't even make umrah for her or hajj for her. I can't even give sadaqah jari on her behalf. My mother died as a kafir, bro. And we got our boys around us that are reverts. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide their parents as well. Allahumma ameen. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to be obedient to him and him alone. And being obedient to the Most High, Akhi. Bear that in mind, Akhi. Being obedient to the Most High. And no matter what you're going through, Akhi, your depression, your anxiety, Akhi, you've got problems at work, Akhi, say to yourself, Innama ashku bathi wa huzni ila Allah. you got problems, Akhi, and this is the situation that we're having today. A sister came to me yesterday in Stratford. Akhi, brother, I need to chat to you. What's the issue, brother? I've been talking to a guy for two years. We've done everything halal. No intimacy or that. But it's been halal for two years. May Allah bless the sister. Allahumma amin. So as a Muslim, I've got to take her word for it, yeah? But the sister goes, I'm from a different culture. He's from a different culture. So two different nationalities. It would never work. So what made you pursue talking to this dusty guy for two years? If you know it's never going to work out, your family's never going to be uh, uh, um, happy with it. 
But akhi, that's not the issue. So maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can soften my family's heart. What's the issue, sister? She goes, the reason why I, I went my separate ways from him, not out of the fear of Allah, but the reason why I went my separate ways with him is because he's a sushi. The Sheikh next to me talk about Chinese food. Now you talk about the Chinese food, bro. Half Sunni, half Shia. My brothers, I have never in my 30 years of living heard that a person is a sushi. You are a half Sunni, half Shia. What, some days you pray with your hands down, some days you pray with your hands like this. What's going on? And I said to the sister, is this the reason? He goes, yeah. And also because of his nationality, where he's from, I know my family would never accept it. So you wasted two years of your life. And you have the audacity, with no, no disrespect to the sister. I don't know she's here as well. Yeah? No disrespect to you, sister, yeah? But sushi? Really? So you ask yourself, for the brothers and the sisters, man, do not, wallahi, do not waste your time talking to someone that would never be yours, akhi. You know deep down in your heart, you're trying to find a what? A halal comfort. You're trying to find a someone that you can talk to. Someone that you can pillow talk, but on the other side of the phone, from a different area. And everybody knows, for those that are married, Sheikh, you married, yeah? What do you think? Inshallah, you're married. I don't know, bro. I'm about to say, I, I thought you were about to say three wives. Yo. Yo. Soon. I Sheikh, the latch at home and the lock has been changed. I'll tell you this now. Uh, the wife don't know about it. Allah, I'm a bad guy. Sheikh, Sheikh, confident, you know. Let me tell you this as men, yeah? I'll tell you this, yeah? As men, we might talk about polygamy and second and third wife. Wallahi, only outside the household. If you could talk like this in front of our wives. Ha! Never! Wallahi, we get something dash our head. But alhamdulillah, as the Sheikh mentioned, look, alhamdulillah, look. The best thing for a Muslim to do in our day, in our day and age right now is to complete half of your deen, bro. Complete half of your deen, my guy. Get married. I couldn't give a damn if you don't have a house, but you got a job, but you speak to your parents. We don't have loan, yeah? We don't have loan. Habib, on the call. The brothers want to do a question and answer session as well? No, we're going to do it after, inshallah, yeah? Yeah, okay, inshallah. Some brothers are I saw something weird right now in the crowd. One brother had a fringe and did that. I don't look around, don't look around, yo! Uh, yo! Don't look around, yo! Yo! One was out here having fringes! He's enjoying his hair before he loses it. Allah, I'm a barak, Allah, I'm a barak, akhi. That brother needs umrah, Aisha. He needs to get a shaving. No, um, but mashallah, tabarak, Allah, look. Abba, why are you paying yourself, akhi? No, no. Like I said, brothers, we'll like complete half of your team, bro. Speak to your family. I understand we live in a time and age, alhamdulillah, we find other cultures more attractive than our own cultures. There's a reason I got married to a black woman, bro. I said to my family, I never gave, gave, ever get married to an Iraqi woman. Not disrespect to them. I just, just don't find, I just don't find them like that. You get me? Before I get cancelled on YouTube or whatever, I couldn't give a damn if you cancel me. You know, like that. I believe in la ilaha and Allah. Go for it. Anyways, like I said to you, bro, get married, akhi. Complete half of your deen. Even though you're living in separate households, at least what you're working for is to have a halal income. And every six weeks or two months, you could go abroad with your family. You're halal for one another, bro. Go to Morocco, go to Ireland, go to France, go to Germany, within Europe, whatever it may be. Akhi Allah is there to make your time easy, bro. Allah takes this responsibility upon Himself that Allah He will provide for you. He will provide for you. Stop wasting your time, Aki. Man, I'm telling me, Aki, I can hold myself. Really, bro? With your dusty, crusty lips. Or you think you're not going to lips the girl next to you? When you're chilling with her in the park on that, of course you are, bro. Let's be real. Master, no, Aki, the third person is Shaitan, bro. I will not hate the most ugliest person that you're not attracted to. Aki, if you spend your time alone with her or with the crusty, dusty guy, 
Akhi, you will somehow fall in love with each other. This is the works of shaitan, bro. And brothers are falling into this. And the worst one is, Stratford-Westfield is the worst place for that. <laughs> MashaAllah, tabarakallah. I don't know what trend this is going on. You see brothers, Masha, they're wearing this, you know this belly? They're wearing this belly, who you beefing, bro? What zombies are you running away from? I know what you're doing, you're wearing this belly, walking around with a girl, Masha Tabaraka, that's got this trend that's going on on TikTok, wearing these combat trousers, yeah? Everyone's wearing them. What happens, bro? Uh, some brothers are guilty of it, because you know your sister's wearing it. Akhi, fear Allah too, bro. Advise your sisters, bro. But let me tell you what's happening. I see them walking around, holding hands. Wallahi, the moment they see me, MashaAllah, Tabarakallah, they separate like the way Musa alayhi salam separated the sea. <laughs> yeah. They see, they see Dusty Aki Ayman coming, ha! Huh? Separating like the sea, akhi. But where's your separation? Where's your fear of Allah? Where's your fear of Allah, bro? You're holding hands, you're walking around with them. Akhi, you wouldn't do that in front of our parents. You wouldn't do that in front of your own parents, bro. Why do you think you're comfortable with doing it in front of Allah? Why? Brothers are vaping. Wallahi, in the little multi-faith room. Akhi, in the multi-faith room. I come in. Guess what one brother's doing, bro? Before he starts salah in the multi-faith room, he takes two puffs of his vape. And before he starts his Allahu Akbar, he rolls up his trousers at least to follow the Sunnah. MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. He, he follows that Sunnah, but all of this vaping and stuff, and guess what happens? The moment he walks out of the multi faith room, at least he's praying, Walhamdulillah. As soon as he comes out, it's a link up, drink up with the girl that prayed behind him somehow. <laughs> and they continue going to what? Thunderbird, wherever that dusty shop is. Never again will I eat from there. You understand? They're sitting down having a meal. Akhi, where is your etiquette, bro? Muslims are doing this. You wonder why we're so lost. Brother, I got stabbed. I got shot at. Akhi, the worst things happened to me during the kidnap, bro. The worst things. And while I was getting kidnapped, Akhi, all I can think about, Wallahi, is what legacy have I left with the deen of Allah? What legacy have I left for my parents, bro? Have I been obedient to my parents? Have I followed the Quran and Sunnah to my best of my abilities? What are people going to remember me of, bro? The man that was a dhalim, an oppressor in his community. The man that thought he was a bad boy. The bad boy caught up with me, bro. And I remember when I got stabbed, Akhi, and I came to King's College Hospital. And I remember standing, I mean, sitting there, laying down on that bed. All I thought about. Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pleased with me? Okay, so, no so like I said to you, man, Wallah al Adim, if I now were to go back in your community or speak to your parents, would your parents be happy with you, bro? Honestly speaking, would your parents be happy with you, Ak? Or sister, with all due respect, and I see this happening all the time, Akhi. Sisters get dressed, they go wherever they want to wear outside. Wallahi, they come to Stratford, Westfield. I see my guy, they go to the hammam, they go to the toilet, they come out, their abayas are all. You know, Superman, you got the cape. These, man, these sisters purposely open the cape. You know, them cape that have the buttons, yeah? Like a Superman. You know, the buttons. It opens up. And they have the audacity to think, Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not seeing me. On top of that, the brother that's walking around with them, holding their hands, Akhi, Allah is going to hold you accountable for doing that to someone else's sister and someone else's daughter, someone else's grandchild, Akhi. It's going to come back to bite you, if not with your daughter, with your grandkids. It's going to come back to bite you. Wallahi. And with all due respect to the brothers, Akhi, if you man claim to be a bad boy, come and see me after, bro. I'm going to take you to my enemy's area and go there and say, bro, I'm going to give you my road name. 
and the man them around me is rolling me, I dare you to go into the area and say, bro, that's my guys. That's my boys. I'm riding for them. And see if a man don't wig you off, bro. Man will put something in your wig, actually. That's the reality of it. You might claim to be a bad boy. You might claim to be riding for a brother. Let me take you to where the real bad boys are, actually. Man that don't give a damn about the laws of Allah. Man that take matters into their own hands. Look what happened with Fir'aun, bro. Ana rabbukumul a'la. He said, I am your Lord Most High. And look how Allah humiliated him. To the level that when the sea crushed down on him, the sea rejected him. To the level where the earth rejected him. The earth rejected because you didn't get buried, bro. You're in a dusty museum and you're there as a what? As an evidence for us. This is a man that claimed he was a Lord, Akhi. And look how Allah left him in the what? In, in a museum. What's what? Laying there like this. Wakanda forever, bro. That's what my man's doing. Huh? Where is he now, bro? Laying down. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used him as an example for a man that thinks he's a gangster. This is the reality of it, bro. Abu Lahab, he was the Fir'aun of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's time. Abu Jahad, uh, forgive me, Shaykh. Abu Jahad, this guy was such a dhalim, such an oppressor, that wallahi, the first Muslim, the first woman, akhi, listen to it, the first person that died as a Muslim was a woman, akhi. And do you know what he did to her? All he wanted her to do is say that there is, there, you know, worship our lords, worship our God, our idols. She remained upon La ilaha in Allah, so she was in the middle of Mecca, Akhi hand like this. My man got a spear. You know what a spear is, yeah? And he stabbed her in her private part, Akhi. This is a woman that did not give up on La ilaha in Allah, Muhammad Rasulullah. She died. The first person that died as a Muslim was a female. Women of our age today should be the backbones of the Ummah. Every single time there's a call for charity, who jumps on the bandwagon? The sisters. And we love you and respect you for this. Where are the brothers, bro? If it wasn't for the sisters, the Ummah wouldn't flourish to the way it did today, bro. Because it is the women that had the likes of Salah ad and Ayyub. The likes of Khalid ibn Walid, Umar ibn Khattab. But guess what happened to this guy that put the spear into our sister's private part? When he was on the battlefield, guess who killed him, bro? A 13 and a 14 year old guy. Brothers! These men were on the battlefield as a beast! What's our 13 and 14 guys doing now today, bro? Little TikTok dancers and that. I'm a lion, bro! Arguing with their mother because they want a new face or kind of a goose jacket. That's what our 13 or 14 year olds are doing today, bro. By the time of the Prophet, the beast on the battlefield, they were arguing amongst each other. Who was the one that killed him? So the Prophet said, Show me your swords. And there was blood on their swords, Akhi. 13 and 14 year olds, bro. These are the men of our Ummah, bro. The men of our Ummah. The man that conquered who? Andalus. Spain. Was what? 17 years old, bro. A commander. You know who he had behind him? The Muslims. Do you know who he had above him? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And do you know who he had in front of him? Not just the enemies. He had the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to follow. Not none of these sets where every man differentiates himself Nah, akhi, I'm this, I'm that. Forget all of that, bro. These are men of our time, my guy. And in today's age, I'm going to tell you this, bro. Until now, I've got brothers that roll everywhere with me, bro. I come to a talk, brothers could be in the crowd right now. You know why? Because they fear that even though the problems that I made for myself back in the day will come up and chase me, bro. And you lot recently knew about the story that I put up about the pot and the, uh, and the lid, yeah? I don't know if you come across it. I swear to you, Sheikh, I had an argument with my wife for so long. There was one day. She's telling me, you have to take this pot out of the house. I said, nah, I'm not trying to do that. These times, I'm going to be real with you, bro. Sometimes I used to carry a knife. Sometimes I never. 
But this day, I never had nothing Omicron jumping on the train. This before I started driving. My wife goes, you have to take it out of the house. After some time, I agreed. Jumped on the train. I bumped into some of my, en some of my enemies on the train. Yeah. The, only day, the only thing there to defend me other than the pot and the lid was who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything happens by his permission. Akhi, in the moment with them man clocked who I am, Akhi, I took out the pot, I took out the lid, Wallah al azim we started fighting, them man have three of them, knives, they're hitting the, they're hitting the pot lid, yeah? As going, chin, 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 and I'm hitting them with the, with the pot, it's going, dying, dying, Akhi, it's hitting them. You can hear it on your head. This is what's happening. And Wallahi, after that, I thanked my wife so much. Because of you, I got this pot out, and because of you, that I was saved. Now, whatever my wife tells me, Akhi, Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Eamon, fix your hair. Fixing my hair. Eamon, you do this, do that. I try to listen to her to my best of my abilities. But listen to this, my brothers, yeah? And this is something I must share with you, man, yeah? And for the sisters that are here. For the sisters that are trying to marry a bad boy. Understand this. Some of the trauma that he's gone through is going to come back to buy you in your marriage. And I'm going to use myself as an example, Akhi. I'm not the best of husbands, bro. Nor am I the best of fathers to my kids. Wallahi, I'm not. Wallahi, there's times where I lash out on my wife, Akhi, because of the trauma that I've suffered on the road. It comes back to me. I've got anger issues, bro. And anger is from the shaitan. It's not from a Muslim. I get angry to such a level, Akhi, I will start punching the wall. I will do something to the level where I don't want to oppress my family, so I leave the house to get some fresh air. This is what the rose does to me, bro. And it hurts me, bro. The same wife, the same mother that supports me, that care for me, that love me, is the same mother I'm showing my anger to, bro. But alhamdulillah, they're patient with me, bro. Recently, six months ago, I lost my mother to go into where Mecca, Akhi. She went to Umrah. The worst thing that could ever happen to a man, ever. I could have lost my wife, my daughter, my stepson, my dad with it on the same day. I don't think I would have felt the same way I felt without my mother's gun, bro. Right now, the sheikh will ask me in the office, bro, how are you, bro? Mentally, I'm destroyed, Akhi. Mentally, I can't, I can't, I can't focus without my mum. My heartbeat, my core has gone back to Allah. What do I do? I have to continue her legacy, bro. Because while everybody turned their backs on me, it was only my mother that supported me, bro. At my worst, at my worst, my mother had her doors open to me. At my very worst, Akhi, when I was ill, my mother would make me a remedy or give me some tablets to do what? To make me get better, saying, Amen, the youth need you. Go to the masjid. Sometimes I was so bad, I had to cancel my talks like this. But at times when I was with my mother, my mother would give me that energy to go because the youth need you, bro. The youth need to learn from your mistakes because it's because of you, inshallah, they will obey their parents. It's because of you, they'll obey the following of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's because of you, they will obey Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And I tell you this, my brothers, yeah? And I look, I'm going to leave you with this. Focus on three things in your life. Your relationship with Allah and whatever comes with it. The Quran, the Sunnah, the companions, you follow that. Don't give yourself a title, Akhi. You are layman. When you start your knowledge on going down this avenue, as the brother just before mentioned, he said we're starting a group of people that want to learn the deen of Allah solely for his pleasure and his mercy. And let me tell you about this as well. There will come a, two people on your maqiyama. Two people will come on your maqiyama. One of them will go to Jahannam. And one of them, I'll finish on this inshallah, Shaykh. Yeah? Take my time, yeah? Shaykh, we're here till Fajr. <laughs> there was two people that will come on Yom Qiyamah One of them is going to Jahannam And he needs one good deed One, one And his friend will come And he's only got that one good deed That will make him go to Jannah And they're talking amongst themselves And they're saying to me Bro, look at the true companionship One of them will say to the other goes, ah, you know, Why are you going to Jahannam? He will say I only need one good deed to get into Jannah the man that asked him has only got one good deed. And he says, you know what? I will give you my good deed. So at least one of us will go to Jannah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because of this 
man that was so generous towards his friend, he said, how can my servant be more generous than me? How? So therefore, I'm going to get both of them to go into Jannah through my mercy. Because no person is more generous than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And ask yourselves, man, are you going to be amongst the ones that are going to be that person that were looking to forward to give you that good one deed? Or are you going to be the one that's going to be stingy and in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because I'm holding on to this one good deed because this is what's getting me to Jannah. And these are the boys that surround you. The second akhi that you should always work on is your relationship with your family, man. Your mum and your dad, man. Akhi, I miss my mum, man. On a daily basis, akhi, I break down on a different level, akhi. Allahumma ameen. Wallahi, there isn't a day that goes by where I don't cry, akhi. And it breaks my heart to see aunties calling me or seeing them in the streets where brothers like us are disrespecting them, man. These are your mothers, bro. They carried you for nine months. Do you think it's fair? And you always blame someone. You blame society. Actually, society didn't put a gun in your hand or knife in your hand and told you to go and kill someone. Society hasn't put drugs into your door. Akhi, or underneath your matches to say, bro, tomorrow you're going to start shotting. Society hasn't done this. Stop blaming the people around you as well. Because you're going to be stood in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, naked, uncircumcised. This is what's going to happen to you, bro. Be obedient to Allah, Akhi. And be obedient to your parents, man. Every single day I go to my mother's room and I sit on her bed and I say, Mom, I miss you, man. And I regret the stuff that I've done towards her now, every single time the door got kicked down because of my enemies. My door got kicked down because of the feds. This is what's happening, bro. You want to claim to be a bad boy? Akhi, go ahead, bro. Do it after your parents have returned back to Allah. Because I miss mine. You don't want to regret the good and the bad things that you've done towards your parents, bro. Go home. Spend time with your parents, man. I'm going to go home now and there's no one there to greet me. Assalamu alaikum ya amen. There's no one there for me no more. I go home, Akhi, I'm a miserable guy right now. All of this laughing and joking and that. If you see me on road or doing it on social media or whatever, Akhi, this is all fake. It's a facade. I'm lying to myself telling you that I'm okay. I'm not okay, bro. I'm dying inside. And you're going to fall into that. Wallah, you're going to fall into that. And what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Qul ya ibadi ya alladhina asrafu ala anfusihim. La taqnatu min rahmatillah. Oh my servants. Allah is telling you, akhi. Ya ibadi. He's not saying, oh servant. No, no, no. He's saying, ya ibadi. Oh my servant. He's giving you a status, bro. You belong to him. Oh, ya ibadi, oh my servant, no matter how much you transgressed against yourself, no matter how much weed you smoked, no matter how much girls you've spoken to or slept with, no matter how much man you've slept with, or what you've done, Akhi, la taqnatu min rahmatillah, do not give hope, or do not give up on the hopes of Allah, on the mercy of Allah. Do not give that up, bro. Allah is there to listen to you daily, Akhi, daily. My five daily prayers is what I look forward to. Look around you, bro. How many of the men around you that don't pray? Akhi, ask them to come to the masjid. Wallah, I'm not asking you to, you know, to cut your ties with them. But I'm going to say this to Sheikh as well, yeah? If the person around you, Akhi, if the person around you is not praying their five daily prayers, just their basics of their five daily prayers, Akhi, I expect every single one of you to do a moonwalk like Michael Jackson away from him. I'm going to be real with you, bro. You claim you want good for your brother? See how he is with his obedience to Allah and his obedience to his parents. That's true brotherhood, bro. Try and direct them to be good to their parents. My man's telling me around me, his mum, wallah, his mum will call him. Uh, my mum's calling him, I'm not even going to answer. You need to have the man them around you say, bro, that's your mum. Answer the phone, bro. Not the man around you say, Akhi, you can call her later. And for the sisters, fear Allah to your best of your abilities. 
I don't give a damn where you are. If you're here, if you're online watching this, if you're going to watch this video across the road, across the world in whatever country you're in, Wallahi, do not waste your time on these dusty men. They're only there for one thing. It's to waste your time, well, quite a few things actually, to waste your time and to fall into zina. That's the zina of the hands, zina of the eyes, of their crusty lips, because they don't, they don't moisturize it, and the zina that's physically done. The zina, actually, zina is a very severe thing. So sisters, you are, there's no one to blame but yourselves. And for the brothers, understand that one day it's going to happen to your daughter. And then that's when it's going to be too late, inshallah. I love you all for the sake of Allah. And this child takes a few minutes.